So in this lesson, we're gonna to continue to finalize the image using glow and blur to really make your character feel like it's in an environment. We really wanna bring this to life. And so all of these little finishing touches are gonna to really bring it home for us. And so the way we're gonna do that is by really creating these simple techniques that will bring this character to life. And we're gonna do that now in this lesson. In this video, we're gonna paint the final main element of this scene, which are these bubbles. I guess you could say they're like magic or different types of special bubbles because they don't pop. They just kind of keep these little guys trapped and I just thought I'd paint something transparent like this. We have a total of like maybe six or seven textures. We have metal, we have this rubbery kind of material, we have chrome, we have fabric, we have fur. I'm going to grab this elliptical marquee tool, make sure it's at one pixel. I'm not going to position this here, like that's not where it's meant to be, but I'm just going to for scale and for transparency uh, reference. I'm going to just kind of use a light blue color for now and we're going to just fill that in. I am using the soft edge brush. We're going to hit this with a uh, darker like royal blue at the bottom here. And we're going to do the same thing up top. And we're going to blend that in. I really want that to be like a rich blue here. And then I want to fade this out some. And then I want to incorporate some of this kind of purple. This is all just soap and it's very organic and loose, so you don't want to be stiff with this. And then we're going to bring in some of this green. I just kind of have it run through in between and over different sections and then blend it in other parts, but I don't worry about blending it in. Have some soft edges and then some harder edges like this, you know, so don't blend every single little thing. And then you're going to hit up here with the highlight. Because this is transparent, whatever's going on up here, this highlight, it will end up hitting down here. And then we're going to kind of go around the whole thing with a highlight. And then we're going to turn off this lock pixels and then we're going to add a mask to this and we're going to start to erase. It's usually like gravity is pulling it down and so the film is usually thicker on the bottom than it is up top. So you're going to have more of the transparency up top. 
you're gonna have a thicker film of this stuff at the bottom. Now obviously if the wind is pulling the bubble that could affect that as well just for the sake of painting this. I think I want to bring in some more of that blue. I like to kind of add those wiggly strokes. I feel like that kind of helps sell the idea that this is kind of liquidy and water. Flatten those two layers, add another mask, and again just kind of remove some of that away. And then we're going to grab the hard edge brush, apply this mask one more time, a new layer on top, and we're going to grab a really bright white. We got a highlight up there and then we're going to also have a highlight down here. I think we're almost done. So we're gonna take this whole thing, we're gonna flatten it one more time, we're gonna use one more mask. If you see there's a little this dark line here, that's like being able to see whatever's in the background, that's transparency. I think I'm going to move to this soft edge, but I'm going to bump it up to like 80 on the flow. That creates a little bit more transparency. I'm going to turn off this reference and move this bubble around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this video so I can go ahead and get these other ones done. Here I just duplicated this bubble and now I'm going to kind of resize it. And then duplicate it again and resize that. Whoops. And then I want to merge these two into one. So it's kind of looked like this blob, like kind of separating itself. And so what I'm doing is connecting the two and then I'm going to erase away those edges there. And then I'm going to paint in the details that I need to make it look like all one big shape. Just continuing to kind of fill those, add in some highlights here, maybe some specular highlights that are kind of peeking through here. And warping the image, I feel like when it's a perfect bubble, like circle I mean, it just doesn't look as believable. So I just keep duplicating a bubble and then reshaping it. Like here I wanted to make it feel like it's really grounded on the floor, like it's kind of floated to the bottom.
And then bubbles do cast a shadow. So this is like a shadow here, but all you see is that outline. And then you do have some surface scattering uh, that happens there. So you'll see that light reflected onto the ground a bit. And then I'm going to duplicate that over, but I wanted to kind of change the shape a little bit again, just so that it doesn't look cloned and copied. And then I'm just going to add two little bubbles down. And I want the backpack to kind of reflect off the top of this bubble. I think this kind of helps make the bubble feel like it's really in that space, interacting with uh, the elements around them. Put this guy here. I think I'm going to have him reflect a little bit on this bubble here to his right. And then I think I'm also going to do it with the gun. I think I'm going to have the gun kind of reflect onto the side of that bubble. And then in the next video, I think I'm going to go ahead and start on the final pass for highlights and things on the overall image. So as I mentioned in the video, there's a couple little areas that um, I didn't spend too much time on just for the sake of communicating to you and showing you exactly what you needed to do. But I highly encourage you to spend more time, spend as much time as you need to make your image look exactly the way that you want to. Now we're going to move to the next lesson where we'll talk about really refining the shadows and lights. Keep the lights on. Keep the lights on.